Sir David Bard, I'm coming to you from uh, the capital uh, city that lies the most, Salt Lake City. And uh, I had another video that I did. I don't know where it went. I think the Danite mouse ate it. Listen, I have a funny story for you. My father-in-law and his uh, wife, uh, his grandparents, are coming here. Uh, I'm immigrating them to the United States, and I'm going to let them <laughs> live with us and support them and whatever. They're wonderful people. I was sitting in his house one night, and uh, if you want to call it a house, <laughs> the cardboard box with the tin on the side and a light that hung in there from 1921, I don't know. Anyway, he had a, a picture of Jesus. They're Mormons. And uh, he had a picture of Jesus up on the wall. And uh, I, we call him Tata. They call me Dum Dum, but it doesn't matter. It's not part of the story. Anyway, I was looking at the picture of Jesus, and I, I was trying to compliment him. I said, you know, um, that, that's a nice picture of Jesus. And then, I, you know, I'm the bard. I just got to fuck with people. And I said, you know, where the hell is his ear? <laughs> he didn't even flinch. says, the mice ate it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, your picture of Jesus Christ has no ear on it because the mice ate it. Yes, yes. So anyway, that leads me uh, nowhere. <laughs> it leads me to my story. I got a question, and it was kind of two cute questions, and I lost the video. I don't know where it went, so I'm going to redo it here. Uh, one of the questions was, um, do I think Bill Cosby is lying uh, about uh, the rape uh, that has plagued him, I think, for years? This is nothing new. Believe me, it's nothing new. I think I've heard this 20, 25 years ago. But anyway... How do you tell if a person's lying? Is Bill Cosby lying? Well, you know, again, I did a, a video here on how do you know if someone's lying, and the true answer is you don't. People will say, oh, I can see him sweating. Their eyes are dissipating. Their ears are wiggling. W wait a minute. Now, that's Monson. Whoa! Their ears are wiggling? They're lying. <laughs> well, maybe that is one sure sign of the nail. Anyway, um... I don't know if Bill Cosby's lying. I don't think anyone knows but Bill Cosby. And um, I say to myself, usually, when people are covering up, uh, they don't want to talk about things. They don't want to answer questions. Nixon, you know, I'm not a crook. <laughs> he didn't want to talk about it, okay? So I'm not trying to besmirch uh, Bill Cosby. <clears throat> he did some funny stuff uh, about children uh, way back in the late 60s, early 70s. And I just think he's a, a, a funny man. Uh, however, uh, if he raped somebody, that's a sad uh, situation. And uh, if he didn't, it's a sad situation that he is getting uh, accused of that. So, if there's nothing to say, the Bard has learned to say nothing. Next subject. Now, this is cute, because I told Mercy this one the mo this morning. This guy is pretty funny. <laughs> You people are much funnier and much more clever than I am. I just bring it all together. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the, I'm no guru. I have no special advice for anybody. I'm not smarter than anybody. And if I was, I wouldn't be doing this. This is a show of desperation. Anyway, he said, well, if you woke up in the middle of the night, which I do about six times to go pee-pee, and he says, well, what if you saw Marie Osmond? standing at the bottom of your bed. <laughs> Many things go through a bipolar man's, uh, well, bipolar bard. M maybe most bipolars don't think this way. I don't know. But I thought, well, number one, uh, I've died, and I've gone to the celestial kingdom. Number two, she's received so much pressure from my fans that she showed up. Uh, number three, I'm dreaming. And number four, uh, that isn't a tent under my sheets. <laughs> anyway, he said, well, now, if she said to you, I would like you to come away with me, and uh, I'm going to take you on my spaceship, I, I would say, that's outer space, baby. <laughs> so he's testing my uh, veracity, I guess, and my morality. And I said, well, okay. You know, Mercy's still sleeping out on the couch, <laughs> and... I'm going to go with Marie for a couple of hours. <laughs> I'll be right back, honey. <laughs> I told her this story this morning. She's laughing her ass off. So, I would let Marie fly me off to the moon. <laughs> let me play among the 
stars. I want to know what's between Jupiter and Mars and her legs. <laughs> God, I'm a sick boy. I'm a sick boy. So, now, here's where I draw the line. <clears throat> Marie could put me on a table and strap me down in four restraints, and she could dissect me. Now, before she does that, I have to have her sign uh, a waiver. Uh, I've ordered a huge refrigerator, 25-foot refrigerator box, and I have it out on the patio uh, just in case I die. Now, I have um, donated my penis to the Smithsonian and they said to make sure I ship it in a box that it will not be broken. <laughs> you know, a tiny box inside a big box. But the big box makes me look good when it comes through the door at the Smithsonian and say, my God, the bar's weenie is here now. So anyway, I would tell Marie, you cannot cut the weenie off. There's other things you can do, but you can't cut it off. No, no. So anyway, if she wants to dissect me, uh, she can do that. Now, if she wants to jump on me, I have to think again about morality. See, I have to process it over and over and over. She says, Mr. Bard, I have watched your show. I'm just as hot as, as a, as a uh, what's hot? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm so hot, I could burn up. I would really like to uh, sit down. Anyway. There's a chair right there. You can sit down. No. I don't mean on a chair. <laughs> I'm now in the celestial kingdom. And I said, no, no, no. You, you, you have to sit on the chair. You cannot sit uh, where I talk. <laughs> so I have to be loyal to mercy. So, well, okay. I'm going to untie you, and I'm going to let you lay on me. <laughs> I said, honey, <laughs> the part don't roll that way. I'm sorry. You're cute as hell. I would love to roll all over you and, and climb up inside of you, but I've made a commitment. I have a sweet little wife that I would never hurt, and um, certainly you and other girls are attractive. And it's man's nature to conquer and to um, hunt. And, <laughs> honey, my hunting days are just about over. <laughs> An elephant can run away from me. I, I can't run much anymore, you know. Rhinoceros, they, they, the big ones can all run away from me. The little ones, I have no chance. So I have to say, Marie, I'm crazy about you. I'll always be crazy about you. And I'll certainly dream of you sitting in that chair <laughs> and the other alternative places you could sit. But I can't. I can't. The bar don't lie. If I say to my sweet little wife, I will be true to you. I will not betray you. Uh, I love you. Then the bard stands by it. Now, it doesn't mean there's not more beautiful women in the world, uh, more women that are more sexual and more exciting and more everything. But, but, she is my wife. And she is the one that I'm devoted to. She is the mother of my children and raised my children. She is the one that brings me my meals and helps me with my medications. And you saw a few minutes ago she threw me a blanket. She is always, always concerned about me. Marie, she just wants my body. And I know that. I know that. Marie isn't going to, you know, roll me over and clean up my shit. She just wants uh, my body. So anyway, I love the Marie. I love the fantasies that I have about Marie, but I love the life that I have with Mercy because it does give me health and enable me on the bone, strength and loyalty and send use power to priests to be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. Pay, lay, hail me, Marie. Pay, lay, hail me, Marie. <laughs> hear the sounds of my voice hear the sounds of my voice oh god hear the sounds of my voice anyway don't cut my throat don't cut my insides out visit the bard store if you really want to punish your kids I can said buy them a hat or a shirt and say you know you're grounded for a month or you gotta wear this to school I'll be grounded take me I'll stay forever in the house <laughs> so 
Anyway, this bard is now gone.